Hey, so this year I attended the Montreal Audio Fest and it was really good. Um, one thing that I really liked when I was there was some of the speakers had uh, ribbon tweeters and so when I returned from the show I started looking at different ribbon tweeters and I had purchased purchased this uh, hy V uh, ribbon tweeter and I really liked it and so after that I purchased uh, the BG Neo 8 here it's a mid-range uh, driver and so I got thinking after some testing and stuff I thought well what if I took this and mounted it into this um, I've never seen that done before the size is approximately the same as far as the the throat size on my summer rain mid-range horn and so what I'm going to do in this video is exactly that I'm going to mount this um, planar driver into this horn and see what happens. Okay, so here it is. Inside here you can see the, the BG Neo 8 mounted and I also i have added these side panels to make the throat um, just big enough for the the, the size of the, the radiating portion because the sounds coming through these holes here. Okay, and, and then I had to use a lot of gasket material to make it work. I have a lot of foam strips the foam paper. This is a quarter inch MDF that's kind of like an adapter plate to uh, adapt between the rear chamber and so I have a rear chamber that's sealed okay so um, should be interesting to do some frequency response tests on this so what I'm gonna do is do a comparison a direct comparison with the same test setup to the other uh, Neo 8 that I have and I'm just going to test it open baffle for the comparison. And I okay, sorry, the memory card was full, so the video got cut off. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to do three tests. I'll do one open baffle, and then I'll do a second test with the enclosure here mounted to the back of the open baffle to make it a sealed uh, rear chamber. And then the third test will be the horn version. So we'll do a frequency response we'll do off axis and the test setup will be identical so we'll be able to see if there's there's any kind of an efficiency gain with the horn okay okay so here's my test setup you can see the size of my room I'm trying to get everything positioned in the middle of the room as best as I can I've positioned the microphone two feet away from the driver and let's do the first frequency response test on axis Okay, so we're going to do the first measurement here, open baffle. Alright, so you can see the response here, it's not the flattest response. I've only tried this driver open baffle, so I'm really curious actually to see the impact of adding the rear uh, enclosure. So let's do some off-axis measurements. So this is on-axis and the next will be 15 degrees off-axis. Okay, so I've done 15 degrees off-axis. You can see here the overlay. Now I'm going to do 30 degrees. And there we have in purple 30 degrees off-axis. Next we're going to do 45 degrees. Okay, so here we have 45 degrees off-axis. I want to go back and discuss what we're seeing here with the on-axis measurement. So in terms of a mid-range driver, we have effective bandwidth from around 250 hertz up to say 4K, um, where we start to get a rising response. It has about a 10 dB rise. And there's a peak here that's quite substantial at 785 hertz. So let's do some measurements again with the rear sealed chamber and see the impact that that has on the frequency response. Okay, so here we have the rear enclosure just pushed onto the back. It's not completely sealed, but I think we are still gonna get the base gain that we're looking for by adding the rear chamber. Okay, so I've done the measurement here with the sealed rear, rear chamber, and you can see that it's flattened the response out considerably through the passband of this driver. So if we overlay the uh, original uh, open baffle measurement, you can see here the red, it's got those uh, peaks occurring and we got a little bit of a boost in the lows the kind of solid output down to 200 Hertz and there's a, a, a rise here but it's not nearly as severe as what we were seeing uh, with the open baffle 
So if we go to distortion and look at the distortion, um, really there's not really much of a difference in distortion levels with this uh, spectrogram comparing the uh, two we see back and forth we can see better uh, phase response with their sealed rear chamber um, but there isn't really much of an improvement overall with uh, the spectral spectral decay of the driver so um, I would say you would definitely want to use this driver with the rear chamber it's going to flatten out your frequency response and make it more usable down to 200 Hertz so the next test is going to look at the impact of horn loading this driver so I'm going to do that next okay so here's the frequency response of the horn loaded uh, version so if we overlay the the three measurements the light green is the horn loaded we can see that we do have increased efficiency um, through the entire bandwidth now um, there is substantial uh, gain uh, in the lower mids and we're getting further extension down to around 170 Hertz so the rising response has completely vanished and uh, next I'm going to do off-axis measurements of the horn and see what that looks like okay so here we have the on axis is the green and the purple is the 15 degrees off axis so um, yeah we're we're getting a peak here at uh, 11 kilohertz as a result of the off axis so let's continue with the 30 degrees and see what that looks okay, like. okay so 30 degrees off axis we're still continuing to see this large peak at 11 kilohertz so let's do 45 okay so here we have 45 degrees off axis you can see that at each stage we're consi we consistently drop um, a certain amount of decibels through the the bandwidth of the of the horn which is actually the design intent of the of a large mid-range horn is to achieve pattern control off axis um, so that has benefits for your room acoustics because you're not getting a tremendous amount of uh, early sidewall reflections um, but in terms of smooth frequency response off axis we're definitely not achieving that right now um, but I can continue to work on it I know there's some uh, sharp edges with those panels that I added so I can continue to smooth those out um, and see if I can improve this further but currently um, the on axis is is uh, where is it here right here so on axis uh, response is actually looking really good very wide uh, bandwidth so I'm pretty encouraged by this and uh, listening impressions um, it actually sounds really good so I'm going to continue to work on this design okay so what I'm going to do is uh, play some music I was really thrilled with the results that we got from the horn both in the way it sounds and with the frequency response measurements um, we have some issues off axis, but I think I'm going to make some improvements to that further by smoothing out some of the, the ridges there and improving the panels that I put in place just temporarily to, to test. So the song that I'm going to play is by Damien and Rice and it's called Blower's Daughter. And it's just going to give you a chance to hear um, the vocal clarity for this, for this setup. And so it is just like you said it would be Turn it up a bit Life goes easy on me Most of the time And so it is So there you have it. Uh, maybe that might give you a sense of what it sounds like. It sounds very, uh, very open, very clear, very natural sounding. So uh, stay tuned till next week.